my name is Mackenzie. And I'm Jonathan. We are husband and wife, and together we are Tear Dice Games. And today we're going to be reviewing for you Stonemeyer Games Tapestry designed by Jamie Stegmeyer with art by Andrew Bosley and models by Ron Brown. And if you like this video and other board game content in general, make sure to smash that subscribe button. It really means the world to us and helps us put out more content. All right, with all that being said, let's jump on in. In Tapestry, you are leading a unique civilization to greatness through cultural and technological advancements. You do this by exploring new worlds, making scientific and technological discoveries, and achieving great military power by using your resources to progress along these specialized tracks. This roughly to our game gives you flexibility in how you build your civilization with little thematic nudges along the way and using your civilization's backstory to help guide you through the game. Starting at the beginning of each track, you take turns advancing and making new discoveries that improve your ability to progress as a civilization. When all of your resources are used up, you enter a new era, painting a tapestry of your history and driving your story into the next chapter. You have many different paths to choose from to help develop your civilization, and whoever has the most points at the end of the game wins. In all the times we've played Tapestry, we never use the same strategy twice, so there's a lot of different ways to approach this game, and a lot of times it made it feel like we were playing a completely different game, which I think is a good thing. We don't have a lot of experience playing a lot of these big, big Civ games, but that's really part of the key, right? You want to feel like you have a lot of flexibility in how you choose to play, whether you're keeping to yourself or you want to pillage and plunder and reign your glory across the Empire. One thing I found really interesting with Tapestry is that Jonathan and I had very different experiences the first <laughs> game. Like, he loved it. He got what was going on, he got what to do, he was like building his technology, his civilization was thriving. I was over there uh, not really understanding what was going on. And I played a lot of heavier games, and this one I just struggled. It's a long game, it is on the heavier side. But the more turns I took, and then when we played it a couple times after, I really started to grasp it, and the theming really was able to help guide me. And then the models in the game that are used as a landmark, they're so, there's so many of them. I never played with a game with so many and they really helped guide that theming. This game can seem overwhelming with the amount of choices that you have in the game. To me, it almost feels like uh, the, the, they had a lot of ideas for this game and tried mm -hmm. to pack it all into one. And um, you aren't going to achieve everything during the first game and you want to and some things are just you you might not go to space No one in the game might that's an exploration. You might not go to space like you does those tiles won't be used and Like but as you keep playing the game like if you play it over like a couple times You'll get to do that and I think that provides the longevity of the game Yeah, I must say the number of decisions that you have in this game actually really surprised me because the Instructions for this game is a single sheet of paper folded in half. It's a four page single sheet manual. And part of what makes this game complex and take that time is that it's really abstract in what it tells you you can do. There's a lot of symbols. This game relies heavily on symbology and some of how those symbols compound and are combined together is left up to you to figure out in the game while you're playing. So they tell you sort of how things work and then you have to go figure out how they add up together and, and what they do. It is very symbol based and that can actually be like, that's one of the things I struggled with, but those reference sheets are there to help guide you. And while they are big, they very detailed lay out what you need to do. And it's simple instructions. You like, what's that? That's that, you're able to move on. And so once you understand those symbols a little bit through a couple of turns, it's very easy to start moving through that game. Yeah, and I think that's where by our third game, it was a breeze. So yeah. it's really, really not too, too difficult, but it's a lot of stuff to track up front. So the art for this game, for the box, the cover, the civilizations, the cards, it's by Andrew Bosley, who is one of our favorite artists. Yeah. He did Everdell along with a bunch of other games on our shelves. The box really draws you in and so do a lot of the civilization cards who it's like, oh, so that's, that's who I'm going to play. This is who I'm going to yeah. be. And it, it really helps set the scene. This game relies yeah. heavily on immersing you in, in who you are and what you're doing. Yeah, and even the tapestry cards all have unique art and it just really helps set that theme and that tone. And then going off another component, which is 
art as these models I was talking about that represent the landmarks and the different components in the game. And those are done by Rom Brown. And one thing I really like about these is that it's very unusual, not that I've seen very often, these are colored models. And so they come in pre-colored. And if you don't know, a lot of games usually have gray models and some people like to paint them or we just leave ours gray. But I really felt that colored actually added to this game because the art was so beautiful it really needed those components to be colored even if it added the game to yeah. a little pricey side like pricier than if we just went gray i do think it helped progress and help immerse you in that theme yes definitely i can't imagine this game with models that didn't have that color uh, which really, really added. Another really cool thing about the models is just how they're designed. So you start with these little medieval huts that are like, oh yeah, I'm placing my little huts. Mm -hmm. And then uh, once you start progressing on the tracks, you'll unlock these landmark buildings in those tracks. So these science buildings or these military buildings. And they start with like a little medieval building, like a little apothecary with a straw roof. And then you move on to these sort of like modern buildings yeah. and you end with these large futuristic buildings, which I think really helps sort of also paint the picture of your progression. Yeah, and I really hope that think that also helps guide you in a strategy because you'll see all these models lined up and the first time I played I was like, I want the rocket ship, so I guess I gotta <laughs> like do that path. And so it really can help guide that first time player theming. Like you're like, I want this model because I haven't had it before. Yeah. <laughs> and another piece of that that we didn't talk about yet, as you're progressing on those tracks, it's actually really cool. It shows you what you're inventing mm -hmm. if your civilization was to progress on the track. It's just flavor text, but it really adds a lot. It's like you go scouting and then you invent rafts and then wagons. Yeah, and, that's the exploration uh, track, right? Yeah, 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 that's the exploration track. And it's just like, it tells you what you're inventing. You'll, you'll go invent neuroscience uh, and at the end of the technology track you invent artificial intelligence yeah. and you get to start training a cube at the beginning of one of the other advancement tracks again yeah. um, which I think was really really cool theming yeah and in that theming on your board too like your personalized board like it will have detailed theming as well that's like different from the tracks on the board like from the military I know like it will have like you invent board games and then you invent video games and then virtual realities one thing about the theming and the art is it can actually come back to bite you though. Mm -hmm. So one thing that was funny was I had explored space before I invented mathematics. Yeah! However that there's works. like a little bit like a like tapestry <laughs> as in like you're painting your civilization. So you might kind of do things out of order. So we're not saying the theming is perfect. Uh, but it's kind of like the fun of it all. Let's talk a little bit about the balance of this game. Yeah. Uh, so the first time that we played it, I played the Heralds, uh, who I found out later there's a correction sheet that tells us civilization updates. Mm. And I was actually supposed to start the game with negative 15 points because they balanced some of the civilizations later. But even that, I felt really, really strong uh, because yeah. I was able to use other people's abilities time and time again, and they happened to have the right ones I needed. Uh, so I got really far ahead that time. The other times we were much all closer in our scores. Um, but I think that uh, it's, it's still uncertain to me whether this is a perfectly balanced game. Uh, mm -hmm. So it's not really, don't play to win, but don't be you know, concerned if like the, the way the cards are dealt, uh, you end up coming a little bit behind. I would recommend this game to people who really like just spending the quality time doing a, a one and done sort of game at a, at a game night. This is one of those games that takes a couple hours, so uh, you can sit down, you can play it. It's like already set up when you start your game night and it's the only thing you play. Uh, but it's not too long that you need to take breaks, which I think is really good. I wouldn't recommend this game to people that it's their first time playing. It's uh, You're trying to bring them to the game. And you also have to be uh, self-sufficient because everyone's going to be yeah. doing their own path. And so it's hard to turn to somebody else and like, what do I do? Because they're like, I don't know. I don't know that character. But really fun and really a game that you can keep bringing back to the table and learning more and more about it. And it's also a game where if you want to have a lot of like self-ownership of what you're doing and you get to yeah. make your choices and no one can question them, uh, this is a good game for that. So overall, my thoughts, Tapestry is a really cool game. The components are awesome and I really enjoy the theming and I enjoy getting better at the game each time I play. Yeah, I definitely say that I enjoy this game as well. I think looking at Stonemaier Games' big resource management games, I think I would say I probably still enjoy Scythe a little bit more personally, mm -hmm. but they are totally different games. So look at the games for what they are and what you like and what you like doing, uh, because Tapestry is a great pick. 
Okay guys, and that is our review of Tapestry. If you're a fan of Stonewire Games, we've actually done a um, interview with yeah. the founder and designer of Tapestry of Stonemeyer Games. We've also done a, a video review of Pendulum and Wingspan, so you can check those out down below. Really great games. Thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. It really does help. And click that bell for notifications so you can always be aware when we put out more board game content. With all that being said, Thank you and happy, happy playing! playing.